Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at linear equation word problems that involve consecutive integers. Before we get into the word problems, we first have to look at how we're going to define our variables, whether they are consecutive integers, consecutive odd, or consecutive even integers. So let's start with consecutive integers. An example would be the string 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. How would that equate to variables? So let's say we start by defining our first consecutive integer with x. Then the next consecutive integer is going to be x plus 1. Because if we look at the string above, to get from 1 to 2, we add 1. To get from 2 to 3, we add 1. So to get to the next consecutive integer, we're going to add 1 to what we have. So if our first integer is x, the next integer is going to be x plus 1. And following that pattern, then we'd have x plus 2, x plus 3, and so on. And how far we go depends on what the word problem indicates. Now let's say the word problem tells us that we have consecutive odd integers. So an example of that would be the string 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. So again, let's start by defining our first odd integer with the variable x. To find the next odd integer, we would have x plus 2. Now, that's a little weird, but if we look at our string, the reason being to get from 1 to 3, we had to add 2. 3 to 5, we had to add 2. So if x is our first odd integer, right, we're defining it that way, to get to the next odd integer, we have to add 2 to it. And following that pattern, then we'd have x plus 4, x plus 6, and so on. And then we have consecutive even integers. And that string 2, 4, 6, 8 is an example of consecutive even integers. And again, we'll start the same way. We'll start by defining our first even integer with x. Then our next even integer is going to be x plus 2. Right? To get from 2 to 4, we add 2. 4 to 6, we add 2. 6 to 8, we add 2. So if our first even integer is x, we have to add 2 to find our next even integer. And continuing that pattern, we have x plus 4 x plus 6, and so on. Now, take a second to compare consecutive odd and consecutive even. And what we should notice is that we define them the same way with variables. And now that's weird at first, but again, we have to remember our definition would be let x be an odd integer. Right? And if x starts as an odd integer, let's say it was 11, then the string would be 11, 13, 15, 17, all odd integers. And similarly, if we define x to be the first even integer, let's say it was 20. Then we'd have 20, 22, 24, 26, all even integers, and consecutive even integers uh, to go one step further. So now let's take this idea and translate it to our word problems. Find two consecutive even integers whose sum is negative 18. So we'll start with our let statement. So let x be equal to the first even integer, then x plus 2 is going to be the second even integer. So now we have to use our defined variables to set up an equation that we can solve based on the information given to us in the word problem. So two consecutive even integers whose sum is negative 18. So our first even integer is x, second even integer is x plus 2, so we're going to add these two things together. x plus x plus 2 equals negative 18. Right? Our first even integer plus our second even integer, sum is negative 18. So on the left side we combine like terms, so we have 2x plus 2 equals negative 18. Subtract 2 from both sides. 2x equals negative 20. Multiply both sides by 1 half or divide by 2, however you want to think about that. And we are going to get x equals negative 10. And it asks us for both consecutive even integers. So we're going to have 10 as negative 10 as our first even integer, and then we add 2 to that, we'll get negative 8. 
So the two consecutive even integers we were looking for are negative 10 and negative 8. Now, just an aside, let's say you do this and got an odd number. Well, one of two things can happen. Well, that means that there's no solution to the word problem, or we potentially made a mistake somewhere in our work. And I would encourage you to go back and look through your work very, very carefully to see if you can't find a mistake if that happens. Find two consecutive integers such that three times the larger integer is equal to 27 more than the smaller integer. Okay, let's start with our let statement. Two consecutive integers. So we're going to let x be equal to the first integer. And then they're just consecutive, not even or odd. So then x plus 1 equals the second integer. So now that we have a well-defined let statement, let's try to translate the word problem into an equation. So two consecutive integers such that three times the larger, okay, three times the larger, well, x plus 1 is the larger integer. So three times the larger is equal to 27 more than the smaller integer. So x is the smaller integer, so that's going to be x plus 27. And let's say jumping to that directly was a little bit of a challenge. I would just write it out in words first. So 3 times larger, so 3L, or you could write larger, is equal to 27 more than the smaller, so S plus 27, right? And the way we define it, S is that first integer, the smaller one. X plus 1 is the larger. And we can substitute those variables into the equation. Okay, so if that helps, use that strategy by all means. Then start by distributing the 3 in. So we have 3X plus 3 equals X plus 27. And now we solve that linear equation. So we'll start by subtracting X on both sides. We get 2X plus 3 equals 27. Subtract 3 from both sides. 2x, well, let's fix that. 2x equals 24. Multiply both sides by 1 half. And we have x equals 12. So it wants us to find both integers. So 12 is going to be the first integer. To find the second, we take 12 and we add 1 to it, so 13. So our two consecutive integers are 12 and 13, which I hope we can verify. They are, in fact, consecutive integers. Also, another thing, let's say you found some fraction. Let's say 12 over 5. That's not an integer. Again, maybe there's no solution, or maybe somewhere along the lines we made a mistake, and we should go back and check our work. Find three consecutive odd integers such that the sum of the smallest and the largest integers is nine less than triple the middle integer. Okay, before we start unpacking all that stuff, let's just start with our let statement. So three consecutive odd integers. So we'll define x to be the first odd integer. Then we have x plus 2 as the second odd integer, and x plus 4 as the third odd integer. So now we have our let statement defined. Now we have to unpack that word problem. So the sum of the smallest and the largest integers, so let's just write this in simple notation, then we'll put our variables in. So smallest and largest, so S plus L, is 9 less than triple the middle integer. So triple the middle, so 3M, 9 less than that, so minus 9. Now that we have a simple equation right now, now we'll substitute in our let statement. So our smallest odd integer is X. Our largest odd integer is X plus 4. 
our middle odd integers, x plus 2, make sure that guy is in parentheses, minus 9. Now that we have our equation set up, now we solve. So distribute our 3. So we have 3x plus 6 minus 9. Left side will keep. Now combine like terms on both sides. So we have 2x plus 4 equals 3x minus 3. And now we solve. So I'll start by subtracting 2x on both sides. We get 4 equals x minus 3. Add 3 on both sides. And we have 7 equals x. So always let's find three consecutive odd integers. So they want all three. Hey, sometimes a word problem will say find the smallest or find the largest. So it's always important to read the question before you answer it. So we found x to be 7. So then the next odd integer would be 9. And the next one would be 11. So 7, 9, and 11 are the three consecutive odd integers that this problem is looking for. Find three consecutive integers such that double the sum of the first two integers is 43 less than five times the largest integer. So again, let's just start by defining our let statement. So let x be our first integer. All right, we're just going consecutive, not odd or even. So we have x plus 1 as our second integer. And x plus 2 as the third integer. Okay, now we have a well-defined last statement. Now we can unpack the problem. So double the sum of the first two integers. Okay, so the sum of the first two integers, that's the smallest and the middle. So smallest plus middle, that sum, if we double it, so times by 2, is, so equals 43 less than 5 times the largest. So 5 times the largest minus 43. Now a key part here is reading this and understanding that double the sum of the first two integers means that we're taking the sum first, which is why I put it in parentheses. And then we're doubling that value after we've added the smallest and the middle integers together. Okay, so just a key part in unpacking the word problem into an equation correctly. Now let's put our let statement into this simple equation. So we have two times smallest is x, the middle is x plus 1, 5 times the largest, so x plus 2, minus 43. And notice every time I put my let statement with x plus 1, x plus 2, I put those quantities in parentheses just in case there's some sort of distribution that I have to do so that I don't make a careless mistake in my work. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to combine like terms in the parentheses first. So 2 times 2x plus 1. Distributing on the right side gives us 5x plus 10 minus 43. Now I'm going to distribute on the left side 4x plus 2. Combine like terms on the right side 5x minus 33. Now we get to solving. Start by subtracting 4x from both sides. Gives us 2 equals x minus 33. Then we'll add 33 to both sides. And we get 35 equals x. So it wants all three consecutive integers. So we found x to be 35. So then the next consecutive integer is 36 followed by 37. So that's our work with consecutive integer word problems. Hey, really important that we have a well-defined let statement, whether it's consecutive integers, consecutive odd, or consecutive even. 
Make sure that left statement is set up correctly. And then if you find it helpful, set up a simple equation to turn the word problem into math and then put your let statement in with all your variables and then it makes it that much simpler.